Hey, this is the homework help video for Math 3, Unit 3, Worksheet 1, and I'm going to start with question number 3. So for number 3, they want us to identify the leading coefficient, the degree, and the end behavior. So the first thing I want to do is I want to search and look at all of my powers. So here I have a power of 3, a power of 2, a power of 1, and then no power here. So the highest power that I have is the power of 3, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And then what I want to do is I want to look at the power. So the exponent is my degree, so that would be a degree of 3. And then I want to state whether it's odd or even. So because that's a degree 3, and 3 is an odd number, I'm going to write odd. The leading coefficient is the number multiplying your highest power, so there's no number here. So I would just say 1 because I can always put a 1 in here. And then for the end behavior, I want to talk about what happens when I go left and then what happens when I go right. So if it's an odd power, that means my graph goes in opposite directions, right? So odd power, that means I'm either going to go that direction or that one, right? So my ends are going in opposite direction because that's an odd number. And then because my leading coefficient is a positive number, that means the right side needs to go in a positive direction. So this one right here is going in a positive direction on the right, and this one's going negative. So that means this is kind of my basic shape, so I want to use this to help me describe here. So the right side is always going to be positive or negative based upon my leading coefficient. So because that's a positive 1, the right side is going to go towards positive infinity. Then it's an odd degree, so it's going to go in opposite direction, so this one's going to go to negative infinity. Okay. All right, let's take a look at question number 5. So for number 5, again, I want to look for my highest power. So I want to look for my highest power. And so I have a power of 7, and I want to make sure I check them all. So this is a highest power of 7, so I'm going to take a look at that one. So my degree is the exponent, so the degree is the exponent, so that's a degree of 7, which is an odd number. My leading coefficient, the number I'm multiplying by, is negative 2. And so now for my end behavior, I want to talk about what happens to the left and what happens to the right. So the right ends the way the leading coefficient ends. So because it's a negative direction, the right is going to go to negative infinity. So the leading coefficient is negative, so the right side will be negative. So how the graph ends is what the leading coefficient, how it begins. And so now for the left side, because it's an odd number, the ends go in opposite directions. So opposite of negative infinity will be positive infinity. Okay. So an odd degree, opposite direction. Leading coefficient tells me how the right side does. So negative, negative. Okay. All right. And then let's take a look at number uh, 15. Let's do number 15. So for 15, they want us to come up with all of these things here. So what I do is I look, I want to identify whether the graph has an odd or even degree, odd or even degree, and a positive or negative leading coefficient. So I always want to look at the ending. So here are my endings. So because they are going in the same direction, so they're both pointing down, they're going in the same direction, that means my degree has to be even. If they were going opposite, it would be odd, but they're both going downwards. And then my leading coefficient, I look at the right side and look to see is it pointed up or pointed down. It's pointed down, so my coefficient will be negative. Okay. And then to justify, I know that the ends are going in the same direction. That gives us the even, and then the right side is going to negative infinity, so the negative tells me my coefficient is negative. Okay, okay. 
number 17. So we want to write a polynomial function with n behavior. The left is going to go to positive infinity. So the left side is going to go to positive infinity. And then the right is also going to go to positive infinity and then does whatever in between. So the left goes to positive, the right goes to positive. So I know that my degree has to be even because they're going in the same direction. And then my leading coefficient has to be positive because my right side is positive. So then I just create any equation as long as my front number is positive. So I'm going to say 12, like you can pick any number. And then x, and then an even degree. So how about 12x to the fourth? And then it doesn't matter what comes after that as long as it's a smaller power, right? So I'm just going to write f of x equals 12x to the fourth. Okay. And then let's take a look at question number 21. So it says that the equation of the polynomial f function to the right, so this equation is for that picture over to the side here. And they want us to write an equation for a translation of g of x that has no x-intercepts. So we want to have no x-intercepts. So right now, I have these three dots right here, and that's three x-intercepts. And so I know if I were to translate this graph up, right, if I were to move it up, then I could get rid of a couple of x-intercepts, right? So let's move the whole graph up, say, um, two spots. So I'm just going to move up two. So one, two, one, two. And then I'm going to move my minimum right here up two as well. So one, two. And then um, let's see. And then let's move up two here, OK? So then I'm going to regraph it. So when I moved it up too, I got rid of these two x-intercepts, but I still have this one over here, right? I still have another x-intercept here. So my question is, is it possible for me to move this up high enough to where it will never cross? And then that would be no, it's impossible because if this is going down forever, I can't move it up forever, right? So there's, I can't move it up forever to avoid the down forever. So this would be impossible, right? And that's because of the in behavior. So the right side goes to negative infinity, right? And the left to positive infinity. So because we have this going down forever, I can't move it up enough. And if I tried to move it down, like if I tried to move it below, it, I would have the same problem on this side, right? So if I tried to move it down to avoid these two x-intercepts, so slide it down, I still would have this up forever, okay? All right, and then let's do one more. So let's take a look at question number 23. So for 23, we want to determine the degree of the polynomial, okay, in factored form, and then, um, demonstrate that we are correct by writing the polynomial in standard form. So in factored form, what we want to take a look at is we want to look at each of my factors. So I have x cubed, and then I have x that's being squared, and then I have an x. So all I did was highlight all of my variables and look for their powers. So for this variable here, I have x cubed, and then this variable is being squared and then that variable there. And so each factor, I pulled out their x and the power. So this factor, x squared, and x. And then if I were to multiply those together, I have three, four, five, six. I have six x's being multiplied. Okay. So then that means I have a degree of six, which is an even number. And then demonstrate that we are correct by writing it in standard form. So that is really what we're trying to distribute. So I'm going to go ahead and the squared write it out twice. Okay. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and distribute. And you can distribute a variety of ways. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute my x minus 2's first. So I did x times x, which gave me x squared, and then this x has to multiply to the negative 2, so x to the negative 2 is negative 2x, and now I have to multiply the negative 2 to both of these, so negative 2 times x and negative 2 times negative 2. And then I can combine like terms. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x cubed into all of these. So x to the third times x squared, and so I have three x's and two x's, so five all together. And then x cubed times negative four x, so negative four x to the fourth. And then x cubed times four. Okay. And so now finally I want to distribute this last little group. And so I'm going to multiply x to the fifth to both of these. And then do the same thing for negative 4x to the fourth. So I'm going to multiply negative 4x to the fourth to both. So negative 4x to the fourth times 4. And then negative 4x to the fourth times 1. And now I have to multiply the 4x cubed to both of these. So now I've got to distribute one more time. So 4x cubed to the x. And 4x cubed to the 1. And then I can combine like terms. So I have 1 minus 4. And then negative 4 plus 4 is 0 and then 4x cubed. And so there is my equation in standard form, and then it has a degree of 6. Okay, and that's it for now.